it is Monday. How are we all doing? What are you reading this week? Welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I, I don't know how I feel about the start to this week. I have really hurt my back this afternoon. I had to pick something up that was very heavy at an obscure angle to get it out of a big box. It was kind of stuck in the box and I had to just maneuver it out. And I always lift in a way that is gonna support my back and do best for my back, but there was something in lifting this that did not do well. So I've got scoliosis as well as being hypermobile. So when I pulled this thing out of the box, the whole side of me down here, my whole right side, my arm, all the way down the right side of my back, completely down my spine, just spasmed and completely gave up on me apparently. And I just kind of fell down to the floor and screamed into the floor for a little bit because it hurts so much. And now I can just gradually tell that that pain is gonna come on for a few days, which is great. Being hypermobile and having scoliosis is fun. I usually pull muscles ridiculous easily anyway because of the hypermobility with just like breathing essentially. But yes, this was, this was a heavy item and yeah, I can feel like the pain was immediate and then it died down and now I can feel it slowly building up again. So that's fun. So I don't know how I feel about the start of the week, but I have got some book mail to show you that's hopefully gonna pick it back up again. And I have a book that I'm reading that I am really enjoying. So those are two positives. I'm gonna start with the book I'm currently reading. So I have got an art from the publishers of The Atlas Six and I am about 60 or 70 pages in at the moment, 70 pages in, so not too far, but I am loving this. This follows six different characters who are all taking part in this initiation thing for a year to see if they can then go on to get this job protecting the Library of Alexandria. I'm not really 100% sure on what the end goal of the training thing is yet for them, but we've been introduced to all the characters. And the start of this really felt like a film. It, I could very much see it as a montage playing out of meeting all the different characters and seeing what their magical abilities are. And I really love things where people have their individual magical abilities. So I am really liking this so far. I can see it very clearly in my head. I really like the different types of characters we've got. It's a really diverse set of characters. It's just fun at the moment. So yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Also, how perfectly does my bookmark match this book? This is from the Quirky Cup, Collective, Quirky Cup Collective and it just matches perfectly. So that's what I'm currently reading. I got some book mail yesterday and I got some book mail today. So yesterday I got Echoes and Empires by Morgan Rhodes. So this is the same author that wrote the Fallen Kingdom series, which is a fantastic high fantasy series. I always recommend, absolutely love it. This is that author's latest book. Now I'm not gonna lie, I do not like this cover at all. It's very shiny. And I'm not, I'm just generally not a fan of it, unfortunately, and I kind of wish I'd had the e-copy of this. However, I am excited to read it, so I'm gonna do my usual reading the blurb for you because, as we know, my summarizing is shit. Also, I've barely seen anything about this book online. I feel like it deserves a little bit more hype. Jocelyn Drake knows only three things about magic. It's rare, illegal, and always deadly. So when she's caught up in a robbery gone wrong at the Queen's Gala and infected by a dangerous piece of magic, one that allows her to step into the memories of an infamous evil warlock, she finds herself living her worst nightmare. Joss needs the magic removed before it corrupts her soul and kills her. But in Ironport, the cost of doing magic is death and seeking help might mean scheduling her own execution. There's nobody she can trust. Nobody that is, except wanted criminal Jericho Knox. <laughs> that is such a name, isn't it? Like that is Jericho Knox. That is like the perfect kind of character name for I feel like what this guy is about to become. <laughs> Who offers her a deal, his help extracting the magic in exchange for the magic itself. And though she's not thrilled to be working with a thief, especially one as infuriating and infuriatingly handsome as Jericho, Joss is desperate enough to accept. But Jericho is nothing like Joss expects. The closer she grows to Jericho and the more she learns of the world outside her pampered life in the city, the more Joss begins to question the beliefs she always took for granted. Because if what she sees in these memories is the truth, then everything she's ever known about right and wrong and power and magic, and even about herself, has been a staggering, inescapable lie. So I think this sounds really interesting, and Morgan Rhodes is such a brilliant fantasy writer and just writes characters so well, but I just haven't heard anything. So I'm here to send you a little bit of hype for this. I think it is available digitally, digitally as well, if, like me, you're not a massive fan of the cover, but the other series by her, Fallen Kingdoms, was so, so, so good absolutely love that series. That's six books, is it? Hang on. Six books. I finished it last year and I was so proud of myself for actually finishing it. But yeah, this is her latest book. Okay, which means we have 
this left to unbox. I haven't opened this yet. I am pretty sure this is my Madeline Miller set from Illumicrate. Pretty sure I'm gonna open it up. I am a rep for Illumicrate, but this was one I bought separately from that. This is just my instant reaction to these. I have not seen these yet, obviously, apart from on photos online. They are so pretty. So they are in this slipcase and they are green. Oh my gosh. Okay, I need to get into this. This has plastic around it. I've seen really mixed opinions on these, but personally I love them because green is one of my favorite colors and they are green. So I'm very happy with that. But oh my gosh, okay, let's, let's actually have a look at the covers. So Circe is the same cover, well, design, not colors, obviously, as the hardback in the UK. Oh, so beautiful. These are signed. Oh my God, the end pages as well. Oh, it's so pretty. I am particularly excited about the Song of Achilles cover. I have the paperback for Song of Achilles and oh my gosh, this is absolutely beautiful. I need to do a Song of Achilles reread because I think I've said before, when I read it, I don't think I took it in in the way that I would now. I think my const my reading tastes are constantly changing and evolving and the way that I enjoy books is changing too. And at the time of reading it, I just, I think it was very, very, very hyped and it still is very, very hyped. And I was expecting to feel X, Y, and Z at X, Y, and Z points. And I think I put too much pressure on myself and like, just tried to really look at the historical side of it rather than actually just absorbing it as a fun story as well and well not a fun story as such but you know a good story so i didn't really absorb it in the way that i think i could have absorbed it so i really really want to reread this book so this is kicking me up the ass to do so oh just so pretty again signed by the author oh where's the signature page there we go okay these are absolutely beautiful where am i gonna put them there are, I mean, the slipcase is so nice. I love the fact that that's like a complete little set there. I do not know where these are gonna go on my shelves, but I'm gonna work that out. I'm gonna crack back on with my day now, but yes, exciting book mail. Just gotta mess around me now of packaging, but oh, it's just so pretty. I really like the little details as well that we've got like here. Is it gonna focus? Probably not. Can we, there we go. Here and here, the little details, they're just so nice. Oh, it's so pretty. Hello, hello, it is Tuesday. I hope you're all doing well today. I have worked in a cafe this afternoon and then read in a cafe after that. And I've just come back now and did a bit of a food shop and now I'm going to cook myself some dinner. I'm gonna have a stir fry. But I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Atlas Six. I am a hundred and something, I don't know where, 120-ish, 115, 115 pages into this book. And first and foremost, I am really enjoying this. It's got great action scenes. I really like the characters. It all plays out like a movie in my head. It's very visual, it's very engaging, and I'm really enjoying all of that. However, <laughs> I just have a couple of things I wanna talk about and raise because it's annoying me a little bit with a couple of things. However, that does not mean I'm not enjoying it. I think it just means it will knock half a star rating off of it probably. And hopefully it's stuff that improves and just kind of dissipates and doesn't continue throughout the whole story. But I wanted to tell you about them. So the first flaw of this is the description, the way the description is used. I'm finding that the author is a lot of the times using 10 words to say something that could take four words to say. And it's unnecessary the way that they're kind of padding things out. I'm absolutely here for lyrical, beautiful writing, but it feels like half the time this does that and then half the time it doesn't. And it just kind of flips between the two. But a lot of the time, when I want something to be fast and action paced, when you're in the middle of some kind of action scene, there is that kind of more flowery writing that suddenly emerges out of nowhere and slows the pacing a little bit. And it kind of makes it a bit more of a stilted reading experience. So that for me, I'm finding a little bit frustrating, but I wonder if that's just the author's style and is something I need to get used to. Also, this is completely like nothing down to the book itself, but I don't know if you can appreciate from looking at it here, but the font, 
is so small in this book. So I'm actually finding that a little bit difficult when I'm reading it because I'm having to really, really focus and it hurts my eyes a little bit, I think, even if I've got my glasses on. So that's absolutely, obviously not anything to do with the book or the writing, but if you have got the arc and you haven't read it yet, just be warned that the font size is small and I hope it will be made bigger in the finished copy. Okay, now the other two things. I don't really know the right way to voice these things as why it's annoying me, but I'm gonna do my best, so bear with me. I'm gonna put the book down as well. I think the author for this book is American. At least they live in America at the moment, I think. So I have found reading this as someone from England, there is a lot of random stereotyping of other people in the book that are English or that live in England or like anything like that. I'm just noticing a couple of things that have me a bit like, what? So the two ones that come to mind at the moment, there is this weird stereotyping around swearing and people from England. So there was a scene where somebody swore and in swearing, the character said that they observed that this person was American because they had sworn. I took that to be because they'd spoken you could tell what their accent was. That's how I read that. And then later on, like a couple of lines later, it mentioned something again. And it became more apparent to me that I think the way it was meant, and I could be wrong, but I think the way it was meant was that someone from England wouldn't swear. <laughs> and that that's how they knew they were American because they swore, which was really weird. <laughs> it was a very strange thing to, to have in there, I felt personally. The other thing I do need the book back for because I have got a line to read out, so. This isn't spoilery, it's just a line that I came across. So this is a conversation between two characters. They are talking about sex. One of the characters makes a comment about sex and our other character who is English has this thought process and it says he was much too English for this conversation. Which is such a stupid line. <laughs> it just makes me think that there's been a real lack of research into the way these characters have been formed. And obviously this is something I'm noticing because I am English, but we swear, we talk about sex, stop putting these unnecessary taboos on us, they're not taboos. This is just, it's just strange that that's in there. And that line definitely got me like, what? What? It's literally, he was too English for this conversation. It's just such an unnecessary stereotype and it's really bugging me. I am looking forward to reading this when I sit down to read it. I am really enjoying my reading experience. It's very visual as I said, and it's just, fun. As I read this, I'm just kind of wishing there was a bit more of a tight, fine tooth comb through it just to kind of hone in a couple of things. But the story itself is really good fun and the characters I really like and I really like what's forming between the characters and the kind of relationship slash banter side of things between them all. So all of those things I'm really enjoying and I am really liking it. I just wanted to talk about a couple of those other bits because sometimes I quite enjoy talking about the things that annoy me in books because that's always a fun conversation to have. And especially if I find people that have also read it and have found the same thing, then we can all talk about it together. So yeah, those are my thoughts so far. I'm gonna go make some dinner now. Hello, it is Wednesday evening. I think this is the first time you're hearing from me today, but I did film my walk earlier, so you'll have seen that, I think, hopefully. But hi, I'm currently on sprints with Jade, Pris, and Steph. Jade is hosting some hump day Patreon sprints and asked if I wanted to join when I finished work because I've been watching them all day. Well, not all day, but like since they've been happening today and it's been really helping me with my productivity. I think the balance of like being able to hear people have conversations and chat and then also having the concentrated working time has really helped lift me into a way that I feel like I'm socialising with people. So that helps my extroverted brain. Thank you very much, Jade. And now I am on the sprints, so that's good fun. We're just doing our last sprint at the moment. I have done a couple of bits of editing and got some videos scheduled, and I've read a teeny weeny bit of the Atlas Six. I haven't read any more since we last spoke, so I haven't really formed any more opinions. It's still bugging me with things, and it's still, it's taking me longer to get through than I expected. There's just parts where it's slower than it needs to be, I think, at certain 
parts of it and it just kind of jumps into certain places with no context and I'm like oh okay we're doing this now but I'm gonna go cook some dinner very shortly then I'm gonna come back finish these sprints these finish at seven and then my sprints for my patrons start at 7 15 so it's all go sorry I keep twirling around on my chair I'm like a child also something very exciting happened whilst I was on these sprints I have now hit 100 patrons which is so exciting I'm actually just over 100 patrons now thank you so 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 much to everyone who signed up to my patreon I it means the absolute world to me and it is getting me one step closer to being able to live my dream and I am seeing that in sight now like it's it's not far away and I am so so buzzing so thank you so much to everybody sorry if you just heard my arm click so thank you so much to everyone who has signed up to my patreon there is a link down below if anyone else wanted to join I've got my schedule up for February it's basically two sprints a week and some extra stuff on top of that and it's just gonna be great I'm just feeling really good about it and very very thankful for everyone so yay thank you to everyone who signed up there very excited to have over 100 patrons I really need to stop spinning on this chair but I just can't it's too much fun anyway I'm gonna go cook now and then do some reading as the sprints finish. So um, I, I've changed the background on <laughs> the Patreon live streams to celebrate lovely Lauren, Waterstones product placement there, but um, yeah, nice. Oh, things to celebrate me about January. Exactly. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I am sat in a duvet on my sofa. It's like quarter past eight. There's my work laptop, we're ready to work, but yeah, we're, we're in pyjamas on the duvet, on the duvet, on the sofa, in the duvet, because I ended up going to sleep really late last night, because Lauren and I were brainstorming things after my Patreon live, and yeah, this is the state of affairs, this is where I am, focus, focus, ah, I'm there, I'm gonna finish this today, I've decided, it's gonna happen, it's losing star ratings by the minute, I'm not gonna lie, eh, it's alright, it's fine, yeah, this is, this is the setup. I'm literally cocooned in this. Need to you know, let's, can we extend my lead on it too much. I need, to, I need to rejig, but this is the situation. Yay. Oh my god, guys, this book. I need to talk about it. I started this vlog saying that I was quite liking this and that I really liked the story and that there was a couple of bits that were hiccups for me, but overall I could get over it. It was nothing too extreme. Well, would like to revoke the statement because this is honestly, I feel like this is losing stars by the minute at this rate. It's just not well written or edited. And I feel bad saying that because who am I to say that? Like I've not published a book, but at the same time as a reader and as someone that reads a lot and reviews a lot, I am struggling with parts of this. So I've, I've made a note of a couple of things and I just want to talk through them. And I'm sorry that I am just bashing into this book. It is still fun and I am still enjoying where the plot is going, kind of. Although I'm not also 100% sure what the plot actually is because at the moment it's kind of boring. Like I thought there would be more action involved into it but it seems like it is literally just this linear path to get to the end point. So hopefully something's thrown in. I have this much left to go and I do intend to finish this tonight. But we'll, we'll see. Okay, so one of the issues I have is how disjointed the changing of settings slash timeframes is where you would normally expect like an actual paragraph gap just to establish that we're not on a new chapter but we are in a new point in this chapter or a new scene almost this just doesn't have it so there's a scene that i've marked where two com two characters are having a conversation it's just them they're talking and then it literally says that one of the characters is still reeling even after hours had passed and then the very next line with no paragraph gap is just one of another character who is suddenly now in this scene just saying what is it startling him back to their conversation and it just the way it reads it feels like well, where did she come from what room are we in now where are we like are we what what it, it, the fact that it says hours even hour after hours passing obviously is telling me that we're, we're at a later time period but i just it just needs some kind of division because it just seems so weird the way that that's written. I know this is me being incredibly picky, but it's just something that has happened so many times now that the reading experience has been really disjointed because of it, because half the time I think that there's two people involved in conversation, and then suddenly a third person out of nowhere seems to pop in, and it's then that I realise, oh no no, that other conversation has just ended and we're no longer in that room, we just haven't been told that. So yeah, that's bugging me. Also, we have a character. I won't say who this character is because I don't want to give any spoilers, but it seems like their very characterization is purely just to instantly think about everything in terms of sex and genitalia and 
it's getting to a point where it's like, is that their whole personality? Like, have they not got anything more that the author wants to give them? It just seems really weird. It seems like they're, they're cheapening that character almost because whilst there's absolutely nothing wrong with making a character sex positive and having them be someone that is very open about sex and obviously not sex shaming them at all, but it's like, as soon as this person meets any man, they're like, what's his penis look like? How big is he? And it's like, really like literally the second she hears a man's name that's a question she's asked and it just seems really stupid it, it just characterizes her in a way that i'm like can we not give her a bit more credit that maybe she has a bit more to her than just immediately literally out loud asking how big someone's penis is it, it just comes across really strange and it's one of the many reasons why i'm just umming and ahhing about the actual writing in this book the actual line is they're having a conversation where somebody is, has been mentioned and this person's first line, I'm gonna like bleep the name out, is describe mm's penis. And it's, I've not read something in this way before with the way that her character is being shown like this. So I don't really know the right way to approach it because as I said, I'm very happy that they're not sex shaming her. They're not kind of putting a taboo on it, except they were at the start by saying that English people didn't talk about sex. And presently an English person in this book has talked about sex a fair amount. Anyway, they clearly completely changed their mind halfway through with what stereotype they were gonna go for there. But yes, it just, it's a weird take to have to, as I said, great to not sex shame somebody and to still be sex positive about things but to just instantly have the first thing that she says is like, what's their penis look like? And I'm like, is that really, really what that character has going for her? Like, that's it. Because at the moment, I, I don't like this character anyway, because I don't really feel like she's been built up in any other way. So I need more from her because we have character uh, chapters from her perspective and I just don't feel like I'm getting to know her. So I need more of that, but generally, I'm disappointed guys, unfortunately, I am disappointed. Hello. We're here to chat. So in the last clip you saw, I was talking about my issues with this book and how I've kind of continued on with some issues that I've had and I've got some new issues. So I took to Twitter to see if anyone else had noticed what was happening with this character and the way she was being represented and if I was missing something. Because I've read a book like If We Were Villains, which has like, I think a real sexual atmosphere to it and there is a sexual passion going through quite a lot of the characters. And I can see flickers of that in this character. And um, maybe that's the kind of vibe that the author is trying to achieve with this character, but it's not quite hitting the mark for me. So I would say If We Were Villains is a good example of something that has created that sexual atmosphere and that passion. And The Atlas Six isn't quite doing it the same. But anyway, I, I just was thinking after I spoke to you guys last, is there something I'm missing? Am I just completely missing the point with something? and just, is it going completely over my head for whatever reason, I'm just not quite getting what the author is meaning by doing this. So I took to Twitter. So I put up a tweet, two part tweet, and I said, I'm so confused by the way one of the Atlas Six characters is portrayed. I'm now starting to wonder if I'm missing something because when she, but when she meets a new man, the first thing she does is talk about sex or their genitals. And I'm like, dot, 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 question mark. Has anyone else picked this up? Nothing wrong with sex positivity, and I'm glad this book isn't sex shaming, but it's also giving her zero depth and not exploring anything beyond her need to know about men's crotches. So I popped that up and Ro from Wandering Through Worlds has replied with a very interesting point. Ro has said, maybe the author is trying to subvert the trope slash issue that we usually get where male writers tend to do this to women. Genuine guess. So I thought that was interesting and now I'm like, ah, why did I not think of this before? Because yeah, that's, that is what this is doing. Is it doing it deliberately? I don't know, but it is kind of flipping things on its head where you might have a man coming into a situation and immediately being like, uh, making observations about the size of a woman's breasts or the size of their bum. That would be, that's, well, that's been flipped on its head here and kind of reversed. So maybe that's what the author's doing and the author is trying to highlight this. If that is what the author is doing, I don't feel like the writing is quite strong enough to convey that message, but I'm genuinely not sure if that's what the author is trying to achieve or not. It reminds me of when I read Norwegian Wood and Haruki Murakami, the way that he was writing was making me annoyed with some of the things that was included about the women and 
I didn't know if the purpose of the writing was to evoke that feeling in me and make me feel that kind of annoyance or if it was just a part of the book and it wasn't put there deliberately to annoy the reader and highlight the issue and it was just actually just part of the story that that was there. So I, I didn't know which option it was with Norwegian Wood and this is how I feel with the Atlas Six. Now that Rose pointed that out to me I'm like okay yeah all right so I'm gonna read it potentially with that mindset and see if that changes the way I read this character at all because I kind of want that to be what this is. I really do. <laughs> so yes I will I will let you know how my thoughts change on this as I go but yeah that's an interesting point. I feel so mixed when I talk about a book in this way and kind of pull it apart a little bit because as much as I would rather talk positively about every book I read and like have five star reads and obviously I want to enjoy every book and love it that's just not realistic and I'm not going to like every book and I I do feel bad in one hand because I don't want to make anyone feel like they wouldn't enjoy this book I don't want to put anyone off and I that's not what I want to do I just want to share my opinions we're all going to read books differently we're all going to have different opinions and I, I would never want to think that just my opinion alone would put someone off of something. Also I feel so bad because someone's put their heart and soul into writing this book and it's their baby and it's it's gonna resonate with some people, it's just not quite resonating with me. Again I like the story, I like the characters, it's just not very well executed. So I'm not, I, I mean at the moment it's like a 3.5 star prediction but I, I just feel bad for those reasons. Also I always worry that somehow I'm going to upset someone with a negative review or I'm going to offend people with the way that I'm talking about what I don't like in a book and I think that's probably that's very much a me problem something that I need to kind of put to the side because obviously hopefully you guys are here because you want to hear my opinions and this is what this is this is a kind of dedicated vlog for the Atlas Six kind of that's what I was hoping to do this week anyway. But then on the other hand I find it quite interesting doing these kind of chats because I feel like I can get more into the nitty-gritty of it rather than when a book is five stars and I just think it's absolutely flawlessly brilliant and I'm just saying how good it is every day. It's quite fun to have a bit more to pick apart and discuss with you guys about this book so hopefully you're enjoying this vlog. I do intend to finish this book tonight if I can't finish it tonight then I tend to finish it early tomorrow night because I've got a friend coming to stay with me this weekend from uni and I'm very very excited so I want to wrap up this vlog by tomorrow night. So that's the plan, I hope you're enjoying this vlog so far, I hope you're enjoying hearing my views on this book as I read it. I might completely change towards the end but at the moment as I said I'm predicting 3.5 stars. Hi, it is Friday and I'm here to give you my final thoughts on this book. I finished it last night, late last night, uh, well actually not that late, like 10.30. I finished it last night and I want to give you my overall thoughts and thoughts on this book. I ended up giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I do rate using Corpile, which is G from Book Gross Rating System. If you're not sure what I'm talking about then if you just pop it into the YouTube search bar after you've watched this vlog you will see it's a brilliant way to try and get a more precise rating especially with a book like this I found because you're rating each individual aspect and therefore you're looking at it across the board and how it did and I think 3.5 is what I've been saying this whole time I think that is about right for this book I really don't think that this is written very well I think that the magic system is completely unexplored. Whilst I liked the characters, I felt like they didn't have any development or growth. And I think I kind of need some sort of development within the characters for me to feel like they're fleshed out. A lot of times, as I spoke a little bit about yesterday with one of the characters in particular, a lot of the times they just felt one dimensional, like they only had one thing about them. And I don't feel like we need, we got to know them in the way I wanted to, but I did still really like what we did know about them I just wanted to know a lot more. The setting as well often felt, I think I said yesterday as well, that it felt quite disjointed in terms of setting and time that you would suddenly jump from one conversation to another in another place, location and time frame and you just wouldn't really be told that that was what was happening and that continued to happen and I felt that was quite challenging to be honest because it made it feel really disjointed and very fragmented but not in a good way so I struggled there. And I just think all of those things, the character, the setting, the magic system being expanded and explained a bit more, if those things had been beefed out a little bit more in a way that was relevant I think that would have helped because really throughout most of this I just felt the plot was very wishy-washy and I didn't really know what the purpose of it was. At the start it felt like it was quite clear and that's why I think I really liked the start and that's probably again 
why this book got 3.5 because the start was really good and I enjoyed the story. I just felt like didn't really know where we were going for more than half of the book. And then suddenly when we were getting to where we were going for like the last 60 pages, it felt like the pacing picked right back up again, but almost like it should have started 100 pages prior so we could actually get all of the context we were suddenly given. So yeah, generally I feel this was very overhyped for me, unfortunately, and it has let me down. And I just, I feel so sad because I was really excited. I can see why people like this book. I just don't think the writing was there for me. And I think it, it had great prospects. The story was good. It just wasn't clear what exactly the point of the plot was for most of the book. And it needed a lot more fleshing out. So I finished it. That was the purpose of this vlog. I have read The Atlas Six and I gave it 3.5 out of five stars. That doesn't mean it's time for me to move on to my next read. So I'm actually gonna wait until February to start my next purely physical book. And for now, I am going to be doing an audio combined with a physical book because I started last weekend, I didn't actually talk about it in this vlog, but I started a reread of Sarah J Maas's House of Earth and Blood, Crescent City. I'm currently here. So what I'm going to do is continue this as an audiobook as I have been listening to already and just kind of read alongside it as well because I want to be able to start my fictionary TBR on February 1st which is next Tuesday. So this I'm expecting to break me again, completely fully expecting it to break me again because it did the first time I read it and I absolutely adored this the first time I read it. Sarah J Maas just spins such interesting stories with many different things going on at once and really great characters and I just really enjoy her writing and obviously the sequel for this comes out on Valentine's Day I think it is. I am nervous for that because honestly A Court of Silver Flames which was the most recent new Sarah J Mass book we've had which was kind of the fourth book in the Akatar series but also in my opinion could have just been a novella and would have probably worked the same. I was very let down by that book unfortunately I just didn't really like it. I, I didn't think it needed to be as long as it was and it just... I was really disappointed because I was so excited for it to come out. So I am slightly nervous for the second book in this series but I'm hoping I will love it because it's not doing what A Court of Silver Flames did. It's not kind of coming back to a story that we already had closed off with an extended part. This is an actual sequel to this book that we've all been waiting for and expecting when we finish the end of this book. So I am very excited for it. I don't want the hype to get to me, but this is what I'm going to be reading over the weekend. But I am going to sign this vlog off here. I've got my friend coming around later today and we're going to be going to Oxford tomorrow. And then on Sunday, I think we're just going to chill. We will most likely go book shopping tomorrow. So I'm really excited for that. But I just wanted to be able to just have that without vlogging. So I shall be ending here. But thank you so much for watching this vlog. I hope you have enjoyed it. Do give it a thumbs up if you have. Comment down below what you've been reading and hang on, what kind of emoji? Could we put on the Atlas 6? Um, well, there's an eye, but I think the eyes emoji wouldn't quite work for this. Uh, what about just um, the nice crescent moon? No, that would be more for this. <laughs> do you know what? Actually, yeah, let's do the crescent moon emoji because this has got crescent moon on it and this is kind of celestially themed. So the crescent moon emoji, that's one of my favorite ones. And you can subscribe to see more of my face on your feed. I've also got my Patreon link down below where I'm doing lots of lives throughout February. I'm doing about two a month, uh, two a month, two a week. So I'm very excited about that. That is available to all tiers. Exciting things are coming soon as well. Thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling and stay positive.